Hey there once again, in this video we'll show you my Templar Healer Dungeon and Arena build for the Markov update. Despite a lot of changes for support roles this patch, the build from Stonethorn is still doing super well and I also found a few ways to further improve on it. So for those of you that are new to this build series, it is an off healer build, a hybrid between healer and damage dealer, doing considerable damage itself while still being fully capable to heal and support. This is in my opinion the best playstyle if you want to play as a healer in 4 player content, as the damage is only slightly behind a 3 damage dealer group while still having the benefits of a healer. It is also great to play in pickup groups in my opinion, since you can counter a group's weaknesses with the build's versatility. This build is especially designed for experienced players, however I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from beginners as well on previous videos, so feel free to try it out. Before we get into the actual build, I just want to quickly explain a bit about the buff and debuff changes. So with Markarth, the values of a lot of those effects have been changed. For example, Minor Berserk was decreased from 8 to 5%, while Major Courage was increased from 258 to 430. The point is that while almost all support we provide was massively rebalanced, it kind of doesn't matter, because there are no real alternatives anyway. For example, a 40% weaker combat player is still worth using, because, well, it's the only burst heal with a damage increase we have. And the same thing is true for a lot of support. Additionally, due to the mix of buffs and nerfs, the overall build power hasn't noticeably changed. So I hope that already answered a few of the important questions. Let's get into the actual build now. I will go over the main build, a few variations on it, beginner setups, the rotation and a few tips on how to use it in dungeons and arenas. To get started, here is an overview of the build. You can make a screenshot now and close the video. Okay, I was joking, don't do that. Anyway, Breton is the only race where all passives are really strong and useful in my opinion, making it the most effective choice for me. Altmer, Dunmer and Khajiit are other solid choices with more offensive power, but they will require more sustain in the build, so ultimately you will probably use most of that offensive power again anyways. Vampire is basically dead anyways, but I will say it just in case. Don't be a vampire, it weakens your sustain for no benefit. For the Mundus I use Thief, as this build has easily enough base sets for percent based Mundus stones, but stays below the break even point of shadow. Or in other words, Thief is the best Mundus stone for this build as it gives you the most DPS. But I figured it would be interesting to maybe explain the reasoning behind that, as I never did so in previous videos. For the general stat balance, so magic and health, there are two good options. You can go with magic and health food and all attribute points into magicka. This will give you the best damage, but will be pretty hard to sustain, especially this patch. So I would only recommend it for playing with well coordinated and really DPS heavy groups. For a safer and easier sustain build, I would recommend using food with additional magicka regeneration and a few attribute points into health or alternatively health enchantments, depending on what you're comfortable with. For your potions, the strongest choice would be spell power, but for easier content, magicka drop pods should be fine. Moving on to the gear, the core setup didn't change, I still play spell power here in Master Architect. Spell Power Cure is the best Major Courage set, and with the massive buff to Major Courage, it is really freaking strong. Master Architect has also seen some changes. It is a bit weaker now, with only 10% damage increase um, and some added duration to make up for it, but it is still the best choice by far in my opinion, because the duration of Major Slayer is based on the actual ultimate points you spend, and not the cost of the ultimate, you can get up to 50 seconds of Major Slayer now. In addition to that, I am continuing to use two arena weapons, however there are two very interesting options to dispatch. You can either go with both Maelstrom Healing and Lightning Staff for self sustain, or the new Vatashran Hollows Restoration Staff and a Maelstrom Lightning Staff for more resource support. For further gear options, you can also replace Master Architect with a resource or defensive support set. Hollowfang Thirst and Gossamer are the two really interesting options here I think. For easier to get gear options, you first of all can use the normal versions of all the arena weapons or willpower weapons if you want it really simple. 
For the 5 piece sets, I would recommend getting Spell Power Cure as soon as you can. For an easy build completion, you could then simply buy Mother Sorrow. Of course, the alternative support sets to replace Master Architect with can also serve as easier to get gear options. Also, you would ideally want 5 light armor, 1 medium, 1 heavy if you use crafted gear for example. Even though all my setups use 7 light, as 511 simply isn't possible with those sets. Moving on to traits and enchantments, I am running full divines with magicka. However, as I already mentioned, you can also run a few health enchantments if you play with wreck food, instead of using the attribute points for that. On the jewelry, I use 3 times infused or arcane with spell power. Just go with whatever you have available, because it really doesn't matter. For the weapons, I use Infused Berserker back bar, Precise Shock front bar, as I decided to stay with shock damage over the reworked frost damage. As the damage passives, off balance, and minor vulnerability outperform the new minor brittle on this build, in my opinion. Let's look at the champion points next. For the recipe, I'm using a balanced setup as I don't think it makes sense to adjust your CP for specific dungeons. PvE is generally very magic damage heavy, however being a Breton Templar already gives me a lot of spell resistance, so I focus a bit more on the physical resistance in the CP. If you aren't a Breton, you should put 20 to 30 points more into spell shield and elemental defender instead of hardy and light armor focus. What I use is 72 ironclad, 84 spell shield, 15 light armor focus, 37 hardy, 61 thick skinned, and 37 elemental defender. For the blue CP I use 32 spell erosion, 49 elemental expert, 66 elfborn, 56 master at arms, 19 staff expert, and 48 tomaturge. As you can see I have no points in blast, as I think it is simply not necessary and would of course lose me damage. Penetration was changed quite a bit, so I adjusted it to what I think is a good value for playing with all kinds of different groups. In my opinion, it is better to have low penetration in easier content with weaker groups than to overpenetrate in the harder content with good groups where it really matters. If you are playing with a fixed group, you might also want to check penetration again and adjust it as well. The green CP come mostly down to how you sustain, and secondly, what defensive tools you prefer. I personally dodge a lot instead of blocking, and like to use heavy attacks during damage stops for example to sustain. So that is what I focus on in the green CP, ending up with 76 Arcanist, 64 Tenacity for the Magicka sustain, and 40 Warlord, 19 Batching Focus, 23 Shadow Ward, 48 Tumbling for the defensive nodes. Let's talk about skills and passives next. Generally everything stayed the same, however I had a bit of an oversight in the previous video, so I changed that as you will see. So the main spammable remains puncturing sweeps in both AoE and single target. Under 30% it gets replaced with radiant oppression in single target fights for the execute. I use purifying light as both a damage skill and one of my hots. The two dots on my front bar are then Unstable Wall for the Maelstrom Stuff effect and Mythic Orb for the very important synergy. On my back bar I have Solar Barrage and Blazing Spear as two additional dots. Blazing Spear is the same synergy as Orb, however it is still worth running for its damage. My bread and butter healing skill to take care of everything my hots can't heal through is Comet Prayer, which is still an important damage buff as well, despite the nerf. The strongest of my three hots is Radiating Regeneration, which is also the most controllable one, because it doesn't depend on positioning of the group or the group attacking the target with lifesteal on. For the Magicka Steel I use Siphon Spirit this patch, and this would have already been the stronger option last patch, because it gives you an additional hot with minor lifesteal, but I somehow completely overlooked it. In terms of alternative or situational skills, you can replace Radiating Regeneration with Illustrious Healing if you don't play with the Maelstrom Restoration stuff, or use it as an additional hot if you really need it in difficult fights. Elemental Drain and Radiant Aura can both be alternatives to Siphon Spirit depending on what you need. Channeled Acceleration and Channeled Focus can both be situational skills for either more damage or survival. Force Pulse can be an alternative to Puncturing Sweeps if you prefer a range spammable. And lastly, Ritual of Retribution can be an alternative dot, especially if you need the cleanse. 
For my ultimates, I continue to use Elemental Rage front bar with either Barrier, Nova or Warhorn on the back bar as the situational option. You however can also start Meteor for the passives if you exclusively use one ultimate anyway. Speaking of passives, you want to have all the class trees, everything from restoration stuff, destruction stuff and light armor. Banish the wicked from fighter skilled. If you play with Meteor, Everlasting Magicka and Magicka Controller from Major Skilled, Magicka 8 from Alliance War if you use Barrier, both end on the passives, all racial passives, and from Crafting, Medicinal Use from Alchemy as well as Gourmanding Connoisseur from Provisioning. I didn't really need to dummy test anything this patch, however I still did some parses so you have some numbers for comparison. I did the same test as last patch, one with purely DPS which is 55k and one with full support and healing which is 51k to have a bit more meaningful data. Moving on to the rotation, I am using a partially static, partially dynamic rotation which sounds complicated but is actually a very convenient thing to do as a healer as you will always need to play at least somewhat dynamic anyways to react to incoming damage and mechanics. So what I am doing is recasting Unstable Wall, Mythic Orb, Blazing Spear and Solar Barrage followed by Purifying Light in a 10 second static rotation. In the remaining time I then dynamically use my healing, support and spammable, keeping up everything I currently need, reacting to incoming damage and using the remaining time to further push the DPS with my spammable. You will often recast especially your healing abilities in reaction to the fight and by doing so you will also renew your uptimes, delaying your next plant recast, which is why using them in a static rotation doesn't make sense. You will also find yourself in situations where it is not worth recasting one or multiple dots because the target is almost dead, moves around or has mechanics that prevent you from dealing damage. In those cases you simply replace the dots with your spammable. Of course weaving is still one of the biggest damage sources so you want to light attack after every skill if possible. So for how to play the build in a proper fight, positioning is of course something very important. With the AoE damage skills but also combat prayer and the new healing stuff, a lot of the build's power depends on it. Ideally you would always want to be in melee range right behind the two damage dealers with the tank on the other side of the target. However this often does not work, so at the side of the target is often better. That way you don't have everything right in front of you, but you at least still can be very efficient with your AoEs and have a good overview. You also want to try to stay with the group and predict incoming damage and mechanics, so you can potentially pre-buff and react precisely and quickly. In the end, a lot of it comes down to experience, knowing the content, but also knowing how the other players behave. By playing like this, the build is absolutely capable of healing all 4 player content in the game, however you are giving up safety for effectiveness. It is in a way a high risk high reward playstyle and that is what makes it so fun to play for me personally. You can of course also slowly transition into a build like this by removing more and more safety nets from your classic healer build. One of the worst things that can happen to a healer quite frequently is groups not collaborating. I would generally advise you to at least try to communicate, but in case they don't listen, being an off healer comes in quite handy, as you can simply decide to just deal damage if your group doesn't like being healed. And one last thing you should be aware of this patch, minor lifesteal was changed with markup to only proc effects of the player being healed and not the one providing the lifesteal. So that means that you cannot use it anymore to just passively keep up SPC without even healing. It is not really a big deal, however you need to be aware of it and play accordingly, which means also keeping up your other hots apart from lifesteal. This change wasn't in the patch notes, but it was tested and confirmed by quite a few sources. So that's it. Should you have any further questions, leave them in the comments below. I always try to answer everything. So without further ado, I hope you have fun with the build and thanks for watching.